What's going on guys, Victor here. Welcome back to another video. The last video I posted was pretty much all about the slow pitch jigging. We just had a ton of action. So I decided to make a separate video for you guys and just do the clean and cook on here and just really go in depth on the recipe and the fish. First species we got is a red or pink porgy. Gorgeous colors on this guy and check this out. I've never seen this on a fish. I've seen a lot of bloody eyes on fish, but never as bright and red as that the scamp grouper and they got that signature tail they have the one of the coolest tails of any fish offshore and they also have a very unique looking mouth looks like they got some yellow lipstick on and they got a little trace of yellow in their eyeball even though he's little he's gonna make a great little sashimi style dish this is our toro so let's fillet up our red porgy as a fisherman and as someone who gets to fillet a lot of fish, it's always nice seeing them all lit up and seeing the different colors that nature can produce and just the different variations in the morphology of fish. You know, it makes you really appreciate what you're doing. It's not always about the catch, but just seeing how cool nature is, you know, the variety and especially being a fisherman in Florida. Brookie and I have been very fortunate enough, thanks to you guys, to be traveling a lot lately. One thing I've noticed with Florida is you can't beat our diversity of species. So these porgies always have a pretty pesky rib cage, as you see. But look at that. Gorgeous white meat on him. So small, but proportionate to his size. He's got a huge eyeball and pupil. That's to allow as much light in as possible. So these fish are found deep and shallow, but that eye means that this is a nocturnal fish, which is generally when you catch them. We don't catch very many during the day, but at night, these guys are out and about. So now it's time for the scamp grouper. And I have used one knife to fillet all these fish. This is an eight inch Dexter flexible fillet. And as you guys see, three different species, great for all three. People ask me all the time, you guys email, DM me on Instagram, ask me on Facebook. If you could have one knife, it would probably be this guy. It's flexible. I like flexible knives, especially for beginners because flexible knives are forgiving. The stiffer the knife, you're going to have, you can be a little bit more assertive and faster with your fillet, cut through bones and such and pin bones, but a flexible knife is going to be more forgiving. Look at this. I think so far out of all the fish we filleted, this is definitely the whitest of the three. Wow. Brooke, tell me that doesn't look good. What does the camera woman think? Oh yeah. There's the scamp grouper. And this is gonna be the firmest of the three fish that we cook for tonight's dinner. Number one common, you guys always say when we fillet grouper, get the cheeks, Vic, get the cheeks. Well, guess what? I'm getting the cheeks. Okay, now look at that. This grouper is probably, I would say six pounds. I would say this is no more than an ounce of meat on a one, grouper this big. One bite. Yep. Here's one of the most coveted parts of the fish, the collar or the throat. So that is the section right here behind the head, behind the gill plate and right along these fins right here. There's kind of like a section where the top connects to the bottom of the gill plate right here. You got to get your knife under there, separate it kind of like a bone that attaches, they kind of overlap. So you try to get your knife underneath it and it separates right there. Get on this side of the gills. Then you detach the bottom part of the throat that attaches right here at the base of the gills. We flip our grouper around. The other bone right there, go underneath it. Okay, now you see I've detached it from the top the bottom, you can kind of just pull your throat out just like so. 
This is a really good piece of fish to throw on the grill. There's not little bones in here. And if you guys see, see more people I think should complain about not keeping the throat or the collar of the fish because this is where all your meat is. And this is a really good flavorful part of the fish. The cheeks don't have much. So here are our three fish laid next to each other. Toro, the Porgy, and the Scamp Grouper. Okay, there is your grouper, all skinned out. Reason people love Scamp Grouper is that right there. Almost no bloodline. If you guys are liking this video so far, like the video, it really helps us out. And when you guys help me out, I can make more videos for you guys. Porgy, slightly bigger bloodline. Now the little Toro. Not too big of a bloodline either. We're gonna do two things tonight. We're gonna do a little sashimi crudo style dish with our porgy, our toro, and a little bit of the scamp grouper. We're also gonna do a little bit of grilled scamp and porgy on the camp chef outside. But first, this right here is probably the most little delicious bowl of goodness ever. This is roasted garlic. If you guys have never made it, super easy to do. I like to peel mine first, coat it enough olive oil to wear, the tops of them are covered, roast them in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes at 350 degrees, and they become sweet, little, beautiful, just spreadable. It, it completely changes the nature of the garlic. That raw, pungent, bitter taste of garlic completely goes away. You can use this as a spread. You could literally replace it as a butter. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mash this up a little bit. What we're making tonight is a little open-faced, fish sandwich with a little Italian salad, big spoonful of ricotta. Instead of using a mayo base or an aioli for a sandwich, I'm gonna do a ricotta base. It's kind of the condiment, okay? We're gonna do about that much ricotta, fresh parsley from Brooks Garden. Okay, we're gonna do a bunch of parsley. Now, you wanna get that lemon flavor without getting that really acidic and sour taste, lemon zest. Put that bad boy in there. And I can already tell you the mini whisk is not gonna be the right thing for this job, is it? <laughs> yeah, all the good flavors are inside there. This is the olive oil that I roasted the garlic in, which we're gonna add to our ricotta spread. Mm hmm So it's basically like you made your own garlic infused olive oil. Now we're gonna take that scrumptious ricotta mixture all very flavorful things. Parsley, lemon zest, roasted garlic. I added about a, two tablespoons of mayo just to give it a little bit of richness. And we're gonna make like a garlic bread. If you've ever had ricotta on a pizza, it's gonna be a very similar effect. Ricotta is such a good topping. So here we have our porgy, which we're gonna do a little crudo style. I'm gonna slice it about yay big, just like that. Porgy to me reminds me very much of snapper. The color, the texture, I would say it's not as firm as something as a mutton snapper, but not as flaky as something like a yellowtail. This is probably the first time, and maybe the last time you guys will ever see me do this. I'm not putting garlic powder on my fish. I'm literally just putting on salt and pepper. We're really gonna let the fish speak for itself, and that open-faced open -faced fish sandwich is gonna have so much garlic in it already that we don't need anything else. We're really just gonna let the fish shine. So if you guys don't know what this is, this is a Camp Chef. It is a wood pellet grill. So it produces a good amount of smoke and it's got a real good wood fire flavor to it. It's an electric grill. I love using this thing. You guys usually see me using the side burner, but tonight we're going down. You immediately, doesn't it smell like the woods? It smells brilliant. It smells good. So we're gonna go down with our fish. We got the grill set to 350 and then we're gonna go down with the bread and we're just gonna let it do its thing. So for our little crudo, here is the porgy, there is the toro, 
And there is a little bit of scamp. We're gonna garnish this with some red onion, cucumber. This is a Fresno chili or a red chili that I've had soaking in a mixture of vinegar and palm sugar. When you let it sit in that vinegar, that acid or water, whatever you're doing, you're, when you macerate it, it's gonna take out a lot of that heat. So I'm gonna drain it right now. It'll make your chili a lot more bearable, especially for people who want a little bit of spice and flavor but don't wanna kill themselves. And now your chili has also got a little bit of sweetness to it and a little bit of acidity. So sprinkle these on here. Okay, pop this in the fridge. Okay, so we're gonna make a little salad dressing to go with our fish, starting with freshly squeezed lemon. Lemon juice, a little bit of mustard for a binding agent and all, as well as some salt. Olive oil, some fresh Parmesan. And white wine vinegar. Pepper. For our crudo, we're gonna finish it off. We got a mixture of soy, sesame oil, cilantro, and rice vinegar, and a little bit of palm sugar for sweetness. And we're just gonna pour this right on top. Our salad dressing for our baby spinach salad. We got red onion, heirloom tomatoes, cucumber, and this is the vinaigrette we made with the Parmesan earlier. Yeah. This fish is gonna be so juicy, I can tell already. Look at how snow white that Scamp grouper and porgy is. Oh yeah, baby. And then you got a little bit of caramelization going on with the ricotta. It's gonna be good stuff. This is what you do. You get your ciabatta bread right there with the ricotta. You get your fish. Oh wait, I forgot. So I made some roasted red peppers as well. This needs to go in the center. We're not gonna worry about the plating today. <laughs> Just dig in. I got a phone call today, you know, you wanna come over for dinner. And I've been waiting for this phone call because what's unusual about tonight is usually they go fishing, I come over here for dinner, and then I wait to see the video. Well, guess what? I've already seen these scamps caught. So this is really something new. I watched the video before I ate. So now, you know, I'm like not just a food critic, but I'm gonna be a YouTube critic. And um, I really enjoy it this way, you know. So I was waiting for this phone call. I wanted to taste this scamp grouper. If you haven't watched Ryan Moray's latest video, it might not be the latest. The one he posted on September 25th, where they're catching um, fish on the beach. I'll, I'll let it out. It doesn't say it in the thumbnail, but they, Victor, Johnny, um, yes. Alec, James, they all did an amazing day of fishing on the beach, catching tarpons. So watch Ryan Moray's video on that tarpon. You'll not only help his channel grow, but I found it very entertaining. So, so there, I'm not just a food critic, I'm a YouTube critic too. <laughs> What a hype man, what a hype man, good job. I like that and that attitude because when your friends thrive, Johnny's right here by the way, he's What's over here for dinner. When your friends thrive, you thrive. You should all build each other up and that's one thing. I got a great support system. I got a great family, I got a great fiance, great friends, love the people in this room and that's what it's all about guys. Brian nailed it on the head. Ryan's video was killer. And if I could help my friends in any way, I'm gonna do so. I mean, check that out. Just falling apart. It's so tender and it's like, um, it's not chewy, but it's like, I don't know, it has a, a consistency that's so soft that it just kind of melts in your mouth.
think that's the opposite of chewy chocolate. <laughs> it's like, it's like bouncy, but uh, that's not the right word. What, what is the right word for that? Just see Twitter. it on Twitter. Huh? Twitter. You're gonna regret that statement. <laughs> Chewy. How did we just go from chewy to bouncy? Yeah. Chewy to bouncy to tender to flaky. You definitely gotta put that in there. <laughs> no, we'll make, we'll make t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> I can do those. Chewy, <laughs> chewy but a little bouncy. There's your new shirt, Laura. No, for real though. So on the boat, they had said that scam grouper is like hands down one of the best fish and it like comes pre-buttered. And you guys saw, Victor didn't put anything on the fish, just threw it on the grill with salt and pepper, and it was absolutely delicious. I mean, yeah, on the bread, there was stuff on the bread, but even just eating the fish by itself, absolutely delicious. I might say that scamp grouper is one of my top favorite fish. It is absolutely delicious, so. I can't say I've ever had a fish that wasn't marinated in some kind of, like Brooke was saying, butter or oil or anything, so I'm absolutely blown away that it was just salt and pepper on here. The flavor is unreal. Like she said, like just eating it by itself, it's so flavorful, even though it only has salt and pepper on it. And I have to agree, I've never had scamp grouper before, but it's definitely in, in the top now. Everything was delicious. I, I asked, I was very bold to ask for two pieces of fish. I asked for a piece of uh, scamp and a piece of that red porgy at the same time so I could compare them. They were both really good quality fish. Every time I come over, it seems like I'm finding a new favorite way to eat fish. Honestly, like every time, it's always something different. Um, but in all honesty, it is amazing. I mean, we've gone from the first time I ever came here, I think we had a club knife fish and that was delicious, but this just, I mean, knocks it out of the park for sure. Big step up from Cloud Night. Definitely. <laughs> Empty plates all around. We just killed the crudo. Everybody like it? Fantastic. We all got empty <laughs> plates. And I went back three times, believe it or not. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next one, see ya.